With AEW's latest pay-per-view dynasty airing this Sunday, let's take a look at the entire match card and try to predict the winner of each contest. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jose Ramos Jr. But before we begin the predictions, if you guys enjoy pro wrestling as much as I do, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel in order to keep up to date with the weekly wrestling content that I produce on this channel. Also, be sure to sound off in the comments about which match you're looking forward to the most or whether or not you agree with a lot of people's opinions that this could potentially be the best match card in AEW's young history. AEW Dynasty this coming Sunday does have its zero-hour pre-show with three individual contests in which one will see the trio of the Bullet Club Gold versus the Acclaimed and Billy Gunn. This is a winner-take-all matchup for both sets of trios championships, one for the AEW trios tag titles and the Ring of Honor trios tag titles. I think personally it's a no-brainer. I look at Bullet Club Gold and I feel like they've gone enough as for in terms of how far they could go with not only the group but also Jay White. I do think it's time to elevate Jay White into that main event status and have him feud with the likes of a Brian Danielson, with the likes of an Okada, Moxley. I think it's time to kind of begin to separate him with the guns. I do think you can have him around and still interact, but I'm tired of seeing Jay White relegated to the six-man, to the trios division, if you will. So I'm going to take the acclaimed in this contest and ultimately emerging victorious with both sets of trios tag titles. And in terms of the other matchups that are taking place on the Zero Hour pre-show, I look at a Trent Beretta. I think he's going to defeat Matt Seidel in order to help build up this heel turn, this heel run that Trent Beretta's on. And conversely, his his opponent, you know, his rival he's been going after really is Orange Cassidy. Him and Shibata, I don't see any issues of them taking out Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty. But then as we take a look at the main match card, let's begin with the trios matchup between members of the House of Black versus Adam Copeland, Mark Briscoe, as well as Eddie Kingston. I look at this matchup and it's really a toss up for me. I'm kind of interested to see how they go about this because initially I would have thought that Adam Copeland would have defended his TNT title against Malachi Black, but they're going the route of a tag match. And in the case of this matchup, I'm going to rock with the House of Black. I think the House of Black emerged victorious for another reason, which I'll get to later. But I think in this matchup, the House of Black emerged victorious as an opportunity for Malachi Black to engage with Adam Copeland and begin a feud over the TNT Championship. And speaking of championship matchups, we also have Hook defending the FTW Championship against Chris Jericho in an FTW Rules matchup. This is a feud that has been brewing for the last couple of weeks, and we recently saw Chris Jericho interact with not only Hook, but his father Taz in a physical altercation that really got Hook all riled up. I do not anticipate Chris Jericho winning this matchup. I think this is a perfect opportunity to elevate Hook to another level, whether or not we like that he's interacting with Chris Jericho and the whole vortex of Jericho issue. I do think Hook wins the matchup. I think he beats Chris Jericho soundly, although I would not be surprised if somehow AEW found a way to get Chris Jericho his win back after we saw that dominant performance by Hook a couple weeks ago. As for another title match, Roderick Strong defends the AEW International Championship against his opponent Kyle O'Reilly. Two former tag partners, two former friends, not only in the Undisputed Era, but as well as their time and in, in Ring of Honor as well. We have the, the master of the backbreaker in Roderick Strong versus a returning Kyle O'Reilly for the AEW International Championship. I look forward to this matchup. I think it's going to be one of the better matchups on the card, not only because of the chemistry, but because of the slow burn story that they've been telling. Another matchup that I think is fairly predictable. I do not see Kyle O'Reilly emerging victorious with this title so early, not only in his return, but in the reign that Roderick Strong has had. The company has shown that they trust certain wrestlers with a long title reign. Look at Orange Cassidy, who had two separate long title reigns that was only interrupted by a John Moxley and Ray Phoenix you know, reign. I love Roderick Strong. I love Kyle O'Reilly. I look forward to this competitive matchup, and hopefully there's little to no interference from members of the Undisputed Kingdom. 
I do pick Roderick Strong, though, to emerge victorious and retain the international championship, continuing, hopefully, a long and successful reign. In a pay-per-view that is loaded with title matches, we move over to the AEW World Tag Team Championships, the vacant Tag Team Championships, after Sting and Darby Allin were forced to relinquish the titles and vacate the titles, not only due to Sting's retirement, but also Darby Allin becoming injured. And in this contest, we have a ladder match between the Young Bucks, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson versus FTR in what, quite frankly, could be one of three matches of the night. This is the fourth contest between the two tag teams. And in the purpose of the story that we're telling, I would not be surprised if we have the Young Bucks emerge victorious. Many are speculating that this could be the match that we see a returning Jack Perry emerge and interfere on behalf of of the Young Bucks. I think this is the route to go, especially the way they've been building them up as these annoying snarky heels, certainly after what they've done by showing the footage of the all-in incident involving CM Punk and Jack Perry. I don't see how FTR wins this matchup personally, especially the way they've been building up the Young Bucks. I would like to think that the reasoning behind showing that footage was to garner more heat for the tag team as well as give them a record third tag team title reign within AEW. And of course, speaking of the Young Bucks, I would be remiss to not mention their elite stable mate, Okada, as he defends the AEW Continental Championship against his opponent, Pac. I think there's another matchup that should be solid. I think it's not quite match of the night, but it will be a solid contest between two of AEW's best. I do not see Okada dropping the title. I see him again holding the title, for a lengthy reign, especially now that the Young Bucks are going to be the tag team champions, but it should be a hard-hitting, entertaining matchup between two of AEW's best stars. And now looking to the women's division, the AEW TBS Championship will be on the line in a house rules matchup as current champion Julia Hart defends her title against Willow Nightingale. Now these two competitors not only have a beef within themselves, but they have been simultaneously feuding with a recently debuting Mercedes Monet. I think whoever emerges as the champion in this matchup, of course, will then have to defend their title against Mercedes, or perhaps even in a three-way dance, a triple threat, if you will, between the three competitors. I do think it's now time that we're going to have a title change, and as I mentioned, the House of Black will win that trio's matchup against Adam Copeland, against Mark Briscoe, and against Eddie Kingston. Because in this matchup, I do think Willow Nightingale, whether it's clean or because of an interference from Mercedes, I think Willow Nightingale emerges victorious, becoming the new TBS champion. And sticking with the women's division, I look at timeless Tony Storm defending her women's world championship against Thunder Rosa. I don't think the story ends here with Tony Storm. I do believe that we have a bigger story to tell, certainly with her and Mariah May. I like what they've been doing with Thunder Rosa, and they've been building her up as a suitable opponent for a Tony Storm. I don't see the reign ending at all. I will rock with Tony Storm winning and retaining the AEW Women's World Champion and continuing on one of the more entertaining gimmicks in All Elite Wrestling. And you want to talk about gimmicks. This is a match that has no need for gimmicks. Two of the greatest wrestlers to ever grace the squared circle. Two of the best right now, Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay. This right here, I think will be match of the night. You give these two stars enough time. Give them a half hour. They will give you, quite frankly, match of the year. Brian Danielson, who arguably is the best of this generation. Will Ospreay, who is arguably the best of the next generation. I look forward to see what the American Dragon and the Aerial Assassin put on at AEW Dynasty. I do think, though, because Will Ospreay is newer to the company, as well as we want to be able to build him up to that main event status to challenge the AEW World Champion, I think Will Ospreay wins this matchup. I love Brian Danielson, but he's in a point in his career where he doesn't have to win these matches. The quality of matchups that he has produced with the likes of an Okada, with the likes of a Zack Sabre Jr., the list goes on, but those are just the first few that I can think of at the top of my head. He doesn't need to win this match. Have a great showing. Have a great match against the likes of a Will Ospreay, and ultimately do him the honor of putting him over. And finally, in the main event, 
Samoa Joe, the AEW World Champion, defends his title against the Red Hot Swerve Strickland, who has been a rising star ever since his feud with Hangman Adam Page last fall. I think this is where you pull the trigger. I think it's time. Samoa Joe has served his purpose. He has been a wonderful, dominant world champion, not unlike the world champion he was like down in NXT several years ago. But I think it's time to pull the trigger. I think it's time to give Swerve Strickland the opportunity to be the latest AEW world champion, the first black AEW world champion as well. And with the title of this pay-per-view called AEW Dynasty, a lot of speculation has been made as to will this be the show that a Maxwell Jacob Freeman reappears. That is yet to be seen, but I have a feeling something big, something of that nature will take place, whether it's MJF or not. But I think Swerve Strickland wins the matchup and ultimately is interrupted by either a returning star, a new foe. I think if you had to ask me, I'll narrow it down to MJF or Hangman Adam Page. And I'm here for both. I love MJF. He's probably my favorite wrestler on the roster. But a feud between Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Strickland over this world championship must see TV. Must see TV. I look forward to AEW Dynasty. It's airing this Sunday as well. Be sure to check it out as well as next week's video where I will be recapping and reviewing the AEW Dynasty pay-per-view. And please be sure to sound off in the comments again as to what match you're looking forward to the most. Name some of your predictions for AEW. Who is one of your favorite AEW superstars at this point in time? And of course, my name is Jose Ramos Jr. I appreciate you guys for joining me in this prediction video. And I will see you guys in the next video.